Hello and welcome to Finextra TV. I'm Hannah Wallace and we're here at Cybos 2022 in Amsterdam. Kindly joining me now in the studio is Lynn, um, Global Head of Commodities and Food and Agri at ING Bank. So, Lynn, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you for having me, Hannah. Really good to have you on. I know you've had a really busy Cybos already because yesterday you were actually participating in a session. Uh, bridging digital platforms is interoperability a pipe dream or possibilities. So I want to hear a bit more about that. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us, what did you set out to address in the session? Well, first of all, the big question is, is it a pipe dream? Uh, the good news is that it isn't. <laughs> uh, so it's a little bit more than that. It's There's real progress that's been made. Um, in terms of the data standards, I think that's really the foundational work that needs to be mm -hmm. uh, taking mm -hmm. place, right? So we do need to make sure that we do have all these technical uh, solutions, platforms that's available and technical solutions are, or, or technology is really not the issue here. Mm -hmm. Probably the issue is that there's too many of them. Sure. So what we need to do is to make sure that they can communicate more effectively with each other and this is where the data standards comes in. Right. And the, this is where the, the, there's been already great progress that's been made by the ICC DSI, mm -hmm. the Data Standards Initiative where they've already wrote out what uh, the data um, standards toolkit, which basically summarizes all the tools, uh, the data standards that's available. The objective of that is to make sure that people are aware of them and that they can reuse them and there's no need to reinvent the wheel. So that's one and that's in progress. Mm -hmm. The next stage of it is really about um, the legislation side of things. So in order for um, data transfer to happen more effectively, and for that adoption to take place, mm. it's got to have the same legal standing yeah. as the paper version. Yeah. Right? So that's where the, the model law for electronic transferable records is so important. And it's very heartwarming to see that it's finally taking off. It's been out, uh, UN has rolled it out since 2017. And finally, in, uh, in uh, this year, um, the G7 has endorsed it. So it's going to be rolled out uh, very, very soon. And even in the UK, I understand that's in progress as well. That's right. So by no means small questions that you covered on the session mm. as well then. So um, where are we up to then, taking that into account with the digitization of the trade ecosystem? And could you maybe highlight some of the complexities you're seeing in that space as well? Yeah, so to be honest, in terms of technology, uh, digitalization, electronic documents, that's been something that's been talked about for 10, 20 years yeah. already, and we even have platforms that have been in existence for that long. Why has it not taken off? It's precisely because people are, these systems are silos in its own. And trade is basically a global uh, platform. Sure. You cannot have islands just existing on its own because the moment it stops, once it crosses the border, that's when that whole chain just gets stopped mm -hmm. and that makes it inefficient. So what needs to happen is for that to take place more seamlessly, the exchange of data to take place more seamlessly, and this is where the next phase of development would be. Happily, I see that um, a lot of these technological uh, platforms, uh, IT platforms, they have started to adopt more open architecture, which is important. All right, so that's interesting. So yeah. who's being impacted most and uh, what hurdles are you seeing around uh, the new rules and regulations we're seeing in this space? Yeah, that's a great question, Hannah. Um, in terms of who's impacted most, it would be those technology providers that have traditionally operated on, as an island, so they have a close architecture. Um, so the world has progressed and you need to have a lot more collaboration. So for these guys, they've got to rethink a little bit more their business model. They have to open up. Uh, that's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that they will have to start collaborating with each other, ensuring that they speak the same language, and that's where the data standards is really important. And they are able to talk with another platform and to facilitate it. Ultimately, it's about the customer, mm -hmm. and uh, so we need to, f to focus on that as well. And even for ING, I mean, banks like ING, we really need to open up as well and I'm very pleased to say that ING has got that uh, in place as well. We've got the um, open banking platform which is basically offering APIs for the financial institutions and the corporate clients to be able to use uh, so that they can also communicate more effectively mm -hmm. with us. 
All right, fantastic. And it's good to hear uh, what ING are doing in that space as well. So uh, I'd like to end on the crystal ball question, as it were. Um, what does the future hold in this space? Well, it's going to be about progress, uh, not perfection, right? So it's going to have to take time. What I see happening is that, first of all, the foundational uh, data standards, they need to be uh, rolled out, they need to be harmonized, and that's the work that the DSI is working on. Um, and that's probably going to take another one, two years mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. in terms of rolling it out also to the rest of the, of the community for them to pick it up. Um, then the next stage is about the adoption um, and we hope that the IT uh, platforms will start to pick up and adopt all these uh, data standards uh, and what we will see happen there is that there might be uh, a, a situation where uh, a couple of fintechs would come together and, and, and operate. I see that it could be a smaller subset, mm -hmm. it's easier to, to work on that basis and, and that's basically how ING uh, uh, has been working also with our clients. Uh, we tend to co-create, so uh, I can name examples like VACT and COMGO, mm -hmm. where we look at an industry issue, which is mainly on the energy side, the energy trade, and we work together with our clients um, and together with our peer banks uh, to come up with a solution to help address some of the pain points. And once that actually uh, gains traction, then it's possible to start opening up to look at other industries because some of those pain points could be very similar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what I envisage will happen would be that a couple of these uh, platforms will come together and you might see a few of them rather than one big solution. And I personally do not believe that there's going to be one big solution. Sure. So it will be a couple of uh, uh, providers, but the key that the key thing that will happen is that we will at least be able to communicate with each other. All right, so collaboration, I'm going to see a lot more of that. Collaboration is key and it's really interesting to hear about um, the roles of the banks and the governments and the fintechs and providers as well. Uh, but Lynn, look, thank you so much for sharing your insights. Certainly a space to keep an eye on, mm -hmm. uh, but I'll let you get back to the event. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Hannah.